Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Job Shop USA. My name is Keith, and we're in here in my job shop. We have a new project that we're working on, and this is going to be a pair of Babbitt bearings. These are self-aligning Babbitt bearings for, originally it was a five inch marine shaft in a boat. And uh, now they've machined the diameters down and we have got to re-pour the babbit that's inside here. This is worn all the way down to metal. There's no babbit left in here. Um, you can see on this gray one, they, they painted them unknowingly that I'm gonna be creating so much heat that this paint's gonna be burning off. And the, most of the grease was removed. There is some that I will have to take out of there and I will have to bake these to get the oils out of the surface and we're gonna get in here, lay this out, um, create our dams. We've turned, rough turned a diameter that's gonna be undersized. pouring individual halves we're going to put them together we're going to put them in the closing lathe and we're going to line bore them um, in the recent week here I've been really extremely busy it's a lot of work anyhow I've got my breaker box in here and I've got the proper electrical coming in along this wall and I'm clearing out and I've still got a lot of clearing out going here and we're going to be putting our hot shot ovens all along uh, that section over there but this is my new big Paragon furnace I, I did get this running and it's up and running for our investment castings and we're going to be furthering our experience our education and our use of investment castings. Anyway, back to our project here. The first thing we gotta do is get these together. And we've already ran into a problem or a snag. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this on my new Locals platform, Job Shop USA, then you're gonna see this video in its entirety all material will be visible and there will be no advertisement or ads or anything else going into the video otherwise you're just going to get what i shoot you on either youtube rumble and so on um okay there's paint on the surface here which you need to have these mating surfaces metal to metal so we're going to wire wheel and clean that the dowels align each half with each other and we can see this dowel is bent on over that direction and you can really see when you go to put this on here and I can actually put that hole in there put that pin in there I can let go of it and you can see how far off that pin is all right so we gotta we gotta straighten that pin out and we gotta clean the face 
in there. So that's what we're going to start out doing. We're going to prep these so that we can get them together. And then we're going to mic the outside of the ball surface because I want to know how round and how true they are. That's my first goal. All right. So we'll get started on that. The paint cleared off of those. Now the bores here, they, they're about 15, 30 seconds and I can get the reamer in all the holes, but the, the couple of them here, they, all right, we, we picked up our square here so that we can actually see they're, they're both bent out and the same thing on the gray one here too, because we got it to slip together, but we had an opening on the far side. So we knew that it was holding it out and we can actually see it bent. So I have a pretty good quality crescent wrench here that actually will hang on to itself. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and heat them up and I'm going to pull them over till I actually have these at least eyeball square and we'll check the fit after that. Okay. We wanted to know what diameter that ball was so we could go get a micrometer. Nine a little over nine. Basically, <clears throat> what I'm looking for is to check and see. We're just writing 970, 9100 um on this one here we're going to go on over to we're going to take these bolts out we're going to put it there we're going to mic that one as well six inch scale we know that the other diameters we're going to have to turn uh plasma cut some rings to fit on this piece here to be our dams we've got uh about 50 pounds of brand new Babbitt. We're going to be reconditioning the Babbitt we get out of those as well. We've got our new pot, or actually we sandblasted our old pot and it looks pretty new. And we got another new propane bottle, which since we moved over from the other spot, um, we kind of gave the X the barbecues. <laughs> Uh, speaking of barbecue, we got a little ore in here, but it doesn't smell like a barbecue, but it, it does smell like something is uh, burning off for the very first time. And uh, so we're firing up our oven for the first time, and it's in a stage two right now. It's supposed to be coming up to about 1380, and we're just running it through its first initial cycle just to uh, seal the elements in this oven. All right, we've got our cast iron crucible underneath here, or pot, and a steel plate here, a couple box tubes, a couple strong backs here. We've got this thing supported, slight bit of an angle. It's very, very secure, and I'm going to melt this side out into the pot. We'll flip it over, and we'll melt the other side. The center one's there. We'll just have to work that as that midsection as the whole thing into the pot. All right, here we go. Okay, we, we broke our setup here and, and uh, took our pot, put it on the, uh, the furnace here. Because we're getting, we're getting a pretty good quantity here and we want to clean it in smaller amounts. So we did the two top halves. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean this babbit and we'll pour it into our cupcake molds which are very convenient size to drop in or remelt. We're just a couple steps away from actually pouring Babbitt into our new or our cleaned up old shells which will make new bearings. We took our inner tube and bored four rings we put an angle on each one of these so that they would come in close to this angle right here. And these are square. And our mean radius that's in the inside of each one of these is six inches. A combination of how we put this in here with some 
asbestos simulated wrap and stuffing fiberglass insulation down into here smoking the mandrel bore or tube we will be able to pour these bearings now I wanted to go ahead and actually show you now that we got these blasted and cleaned up okay good I got you in the camera um, you can see that this is an un, untouched uh, surface this is how the bearings are supposed to look and this is the rough casting and these grip uh, ports or holes that are in here are casted in and they actually have a a, uh, a larger bottom than the top uh, opening so they're like a, a dovetail plug in the opposite direction you can't pull them out this right here this bearing has been run in fact it actually had zero babbit to speak of in this lower half because this wear and rubbing of the shaft into the housing created enough heat and that's where that's where you get into the temperatures of babbit i also want to point out <coughs> that because i've been looking into our line boring of these in the lathe and this is our yoke for most of our tubular bores that we've been able to do as far as bearing tubes and other like-minded propulsion type of items but these bearings here have got tapers ears this ball pivot in the center and the diameter is not going to let us fall in to here. Our narrowest point that was round is like seven inches, and that's just inside here. We'll never get that past this point right here. So simply, these jigs that I have are not going to work. I'm in the midst of thinking of what we're going to do over on the lathe, but we will be line boring these in the closing lathe. About 500 on the outside and about 600 degrees Fahrenheit on the uh, on the inside. After I came up with the uh, standoffs to hold these things level on the table, I really started taking some close looks at measurements, and now I'm doing practice runs. Of course the oven's not on but this is how I'd be approaching it so we'd be opening up the oven and you can see that I actually have two of my big parallels down in here they stay put and they give me a surface that I can slide in and out so I'm not worried about my brickwork right now all right <clears throat> because I don't even have a temporary or a heat uh, um, platform to put in there or a shelf that I just leave on the bottom there um, and a couple things that I'm gonna order for the oven anyhow my Babbitt at 800 and whatever the number was um, and pour the Babbitt all right so I'll be grabbing this from here sliding it out setting it on the table closing the oven finish setting this up okay when everything is sitting in here square and in line And that's going to be ready to pour. I like that. Okay, how are we going to clamp this? Because we don't want... Once this is held down in there, there's no way anything's going to leak out of here. 
gonna be it's pretty simple pour really all right I think we're pretty well set I found two clamps that will allow me to reach on this little lip down here inside the pipe on both sides and hold this in here very secure the difference between this housing shrinking and the Babbitt shrinking you're gonna have issues of separation and uh, those are the things you want to overcome when you're pouring a Babbitt bearing and you you want to have the shell adhere to the housing <laughs> that's number one we get good pours then we can go machine a bearing all right but until then our focus is on pouring these four shells and getting the Babbitt in position enough we want to be looking at it we want to be looking for it we want to look at it a little bit extra it's well worth looking at it and looking for it later all right I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get some things set up here and then the next thing you'll know you'll hear that furnace going and we'll be ready to pour our first bearing hatch <music> Thank you.